I can start by saying that uh, we are always been a developmental friendly unit and I, I'm sort of proud to be a part of this unit because we were sort of pioneers in developmental care in UK. Um, we were a NITCAP training centre for, for quite a few years. Become a part of us actually and, and, and parents become a, a, an integral part of our, our care. Um, so our ethos has been family centred or family integrated care. Uh, we have recently started this project called as Integrated Family Delivered Care, uh, which is the next step to involving parents in the care of the babies. We do know that developmental care, uh, in addition to the medical care that we give up extremely preterm babies, uh, developmental care adds to the to the better outcome of these babies in the long term. What we all sort of built our culture over is to make sure that it's less noisy for babies when we are around. Uh, we do know that doctors and nurses talk very loudly. We tend to keep the noise levels below 70 decibels. Um, there aren't any sort of light recommendations, but we tend to keep it below 20 lux as much as possible. I'm very happy, you know, with this uh, with this new incubator that we've just started using, the, the baby Leo, and that actually gives us an idea. Also, not only it gives us an idea, it gives the parents an idea what to look out for. And, and what I've noticed is that the parents will actually come to you and tell you that, um, you know, you need to lower your voice, you know, you need to stop the alarms because the incubators actually tell them that there's too much of noise in the room. We have all the nurses and doctors in UK have grown with the concept that there's single, double and triple for phototherapy. Yes, we do believe that the distance between the baby and the light should be about 30 to 40 centimeters. Most of the units would follow 40 centimeters. But the concept of irradiance is very, very little, if you like. Um, having worked with Billy Lux now for some time and having looked at all the data, I do feel that's a very important thing that, that one can monitor. And one can then estimate the dose that is delivered from phototherapy to the babies. Actually, uh, what it would really help is reduce the duration of exposure of phototherapy to the babies. Uh, I do believe that just knowing that you are at the right distance, you are at the wavelength which we would normally roughly like between 450, 460, you know, uh, uh, but uh, also knowing the uh, irradiance just at the beginning and at various points of phototherapy to make sure that the, that the beam of light hasn't actually moved um, or the baby is receiving the same irradiance. Um, you know, usually we would like it more than 30 microvolts uh, at least, but anything more than that is really beneficial rather than, you know, less than that. Yes, I do know that the distance makes a difference and I'm not sure whether how low one can go because again, you know, there's that little factor that one still isn't sure about, about the light effect and the heat generated from the light. Uh, I am aware that, you know, the LED lights would not cause any burns or would not cause any dehydration or heat. But it's still something that's not clearly evidence and it's something that probably would need more safety data. Uh, but definitely irradiance is very important, I feel. I feel if we can manage that and if we can monitor that on a regular basis and make sure that we're giving the adequate wavelengths to the babies during the phototherapy, we will definitely reduce the duration. And by reducing the duration, you're actually automatically saving or rather reducing the side effects um, of, the, of the treatment itself. I mean, I do know that the baby Lux doesn't have a fan and, and that actually reduces the noise. I'm sure, although it's not obviously noticeable, but that's something that will 
definitely have a better outcome for the babies, especially when they receive phototherapy for a longer time. The current phototherapy units that we have, we do know that they have a fan that rotates and, and, and that noise itself can cause, you know, in the long term, especially when babies receive phototherapy for a longer time, that it may, may cause, you know, harm to their hearing. Developmentally, if you see, you know, less noise, more spending with the baby, more attachment, more bonding, all these would, in effect, you know, just make the whole experience of phototherapy very good for the parents.